Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're getting towards the end of chapter three. And today I want to pick up a question that somebody's asked, which is not explicitly mentioned in chapter three, but is an interesting question because it's the kind of question that people start to ask at this point in a, a course of Greek study. And it would be helpful perhaps for uh, all of you to have a chance to just think through this issue. And it concerns the issue of word order in Greek sentences. Put most simply, the question is, does word order matter in Greek sentences? And the answer is, well, yes it does, but it doesn't matter in quite the same way or in the same ways as it does in English sentences. So just to illustrate that, let's just have a look at this sentence at the top here and we'll translate it and then we'll start to see why word order matters in English, which is obvious, and then why word order might matter but not in quite the same way in Greek. So first up, here it is, hot anthropos, blepe ten ecclesian. Take a moment, press pause, see if you can translate that. Okay, what you're going to do is find the verb. The verb is blepe, from blepo, so it goes blepe, blepo, blepe, blepe, third person singular. It's the third person singular of blepo, meaning I see, so that is he, she, or it sees. That's the verb, the subject, verb, subject, you want a noun in the nominative. Okay, where's the noun in the nominative? That's easy again, hot anthropos, so that's the man. That's the subject of the verb, so the man is the one doing the seeing. And then is there anything else? Verb, subject, object, yes there is. You've got a noun in the accusative right over there. Ten ecclesian, sorry, ten ecclesian. Let me get the, pronounce the eta correctly. Ten ecclesian, and remember this is one of those uh, slightly unusual, not unusual, but slightly different feminine nouns where the ending is has an alpha in it, but it's accusative, therefore it goes with the accusative article. So the man sees the church. And of course, church uh, in this uh, context doesn't mean the church building, it means the assembly of people, the collective gathering of people. Ecclesia comes from the word meaning the assembly. It is the word meaning assembly, and that's how it's used in Old Testament translations of the Hebrew text into Greek and so on. Anyway, so the man sees the church. So what's happening here is you've got one guy who stands and he looks and he sees this whole assembly of people. Now, why does word order matter in English? Well, it's very easy to see, isn't it? Because if you pick this up, and this up, and you switch them around, you would completely change the meaning of the sentence. If you switch the word order in English, so the church sees the man, you've reversed the subject and the object. So now it's not the man looking at the church, it's the church looking at the man. So the reason word order matters in English is because it's a word order, almost always only the word order, except with a few exceptions like with pronouns and a few other exceptional uses, it's always the word order that tells you what's the subject and what's the object. However, in Greek that isn't so. In Greek the subject and the object are determined by the case endings. Nominative, nominative, accusative, accusative which means that, theoretically, you could jumble up the word order a little bit and the subject and the object would remain unchanged. So, for example, you could write the sentence out like this, where you've got hot anthropos from here, you've got ten ecclesian from here, and you've got blepe from here, and you've switched them around. The man, the church, he sees. And in this case, the person doing the seeing is the same, the man, the subject. The thing being seen is the same, the church, ten ecclesian, and of course the verb is the same, it hasn't changed at all. So the question then arises, well, what difference would it make then? Does it make any difference at all to the meaning at any level if you do jumble the word order around in Greek? And the answer is, well, yes it does sometimes, and it's subtle, and it's complex, and it's intriguing, and it's one of the reasons why you're learning Greek. So I wanna say a couple of things. I'll show you the kind of way it might make a difference in a moment, but I don't want you to worry about it. This is just a glimpse of where you're heading and why it's so valuable for you to be getting the basics of this language down at this stage so that you can then explore in more detail um, in the future. <clears throat> Let me show you what, what's going on here. Here what we've done is we've taken ten ecclesian and we've put it at the front of the sentence. And then we've got hot anthropos, we've put it second, and blepe is there at the end again. 
So what this sentence says, if you're reading it out literally, it's the church the man sees. The church the man sees. And again, notice the subject is the same, anthropos, whole anthropos, the object is the same, ten, ecclesian, you've got the same person doing the same thing to the same object. But what's intriguing is that in this instance, it's possible that this word order would reflect a slightly different emphasis than either of the other two. Now, it's not really possible to generalise about what this emphasis would imply, but possibly in a sentence like this, it might indicate some kind of surprise that it's the church that the man saw. You, you might say in general terms that this is placed in, a, in an emphatic position at the front of the sentence. Uh, I don't want you to run away with that idea because it's an example of a situation where a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. But it's possible that this sentence might be read with an emphasis a bit more like this. Rather than the man sees the church, it's it's the church that the man sees. That's not how you translate it, but that's the feel of the sentence. The meaning is that there's some level of surprise, perhaps, or uh, something unexpected about the, uh, the fact that it's the church that he's looking at. Now, it's not always surprise. It's not always that something's unexpected. And it's not as simple as saying you can uh, woodenly generalise from these uh, kinds of sentence structures. Let me just give you one other example, uh, just to highlight um, the kind of richness and depth and complexity that you can get. Um, this is from uh, Matthew chapter 9. And you won't be able to read most of the words at this stage unless you're, uh, you know, learn Greek some other way. But Mark chapter 9 verses, sorry, Mark chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. It's where Jesus is, is in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, which of you, um, if uh, his son asked for bread, a stone would give him? Or if a fish he asked for, a snake would give him? That's the word order in the Greek text. And you can see when you think of it like that, it's it does convey a different kind of feeling. It's got a kind of vividness. There's a kind of markedness or emphasis or something striking about those uh, fronted uh, nouns, the accusative objects of the verb. And the reason that's possible is precisely because of this feature of the Greek language that is a heavily inflected language. That because the subject and the object are determined by the case endings, therefore you can move the words around in the sentence to a certain degree in order to create a different kind of feel or a different kind of emphasis or a different kind of overtone. And what kind of feeling, what kind of emphasis, what kind of overtone you're creating is a really complex and actually really interesting and exciting thing to explore. That's the reason why you're learning Greek. You're not learning Greek just so that you can get out of, out of the Greek the same as you get from your English Standard Version or the New International Version or whatever uh, in 10 times the time. You're learning Greek so you can see the subtlety that cannot really be translated by any translation, can't be conveyed by any translation. And so there is your no, not very short answer to the question, does word, word order matter in Greek? It doesn't matter for establishing subject and object and other um, functional elements in, in you know, what the words are doing in the sentence, but it does therefore have the potential to affect the tone or the emphasis or the stress that's being placed um, on uh, different elements in the sentence. And that's a really exciting thing to be looking forward to. Okay, well, you asked, well, one of you did, and great question. And I uh, hope that's been helpful to a few other people. As ever, keep working away, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, uh, for five or six days a week, we will have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all, and having all kinds of fun with sentences like that one in Matthew chapter seven. All right, God bless, bye for now.